Hey, who are you calling crummy? Hey guys, Dr. Sean Miravici here. Now, I know many of you have come to know me as the cannabis expert or Dr. Weed, as I'm sometimes referred to as, but there's a whole lot of other stuff I do as a naturopathic doctor. And today I want to discuss a very valuable and often misunderstood test that I've been running for over 10 years, and that's food sensitivity testing. Okay, so first I need to distinguish the difference between a food allergy, a food intolerance, and a food sensitivity, as these terms are often incorrectly used interchangeably. There are two types of food reactions that you can have. Immune-mediated reactions that involve our immune system and antibodies like IgE and IgG, which I'll talk more about in a minute, and non-immune-mediated reactions like intolerances or, you know, a lactose intolerance. So food intolerances don't involve our immune system and are usually caused by reactions to chemicals or additives found in food, but most often caused by an enzyme deficiency. For instance, with a lactose intolerance, our body lacks an enzyme called lactase, which breaks down lactose, a sugar found in dairy products. Symptoms often include bloating, diarrhea, and flatulence. And what's basically happening is our body can't break down that lactose sugar, so it sits in our digest digestive tract, accumulating water and causes discomfort. Now, reactions that trigger an immune response are called hypersensitivities. And hypersensitivities come in four types, but the two types most often associated with food reactions are type 1 and type 4. Type 1 hypersensitivities are IgE-mediated. So IgE stands for immunoglobulin E, and it's an antibody. And these are what we know as food allergies and can cause immediate hypersensitivity. It's common with peanut, eggs, shellfish, and it can cause rashes, sneezing, difficulty breathing, and in severe cases, anaphylactic shock. So it's often very apparent which foods cause these types of reactions because they tend to be so severe and so immediate. Whereas in type four hypersensitivities, these are mediated by a different antibody called IgG or immunoglobulin G. And this causes food sensitivities, also known as delayed hypersensitivity. So basically what's happening is that our body produces this IgG antibody, which gradually form these complexes called antigen antibody complexes, which can then deposit in our tissues and can lead to chronic inflammation. It's kind of, uh, these complexes are like a little flag activating our immune system causing inflammation. So they are responsible for delayed onset of symptoms, which can occur hours or even days after the food's ingested. Uh, symptoms of a delayed onset hypersensitivity can include irritable bowel, headache, migraine, fatigue, high blood pressure, eczema, asthma, joint pain, runny nose, arthritis, and fibromyalgia. So for many patients, this type of delayed hypersensitivity happens as a result of components of foods passing through a compromised uh, gastrointestinal wall into the bloodstream, which then gets detected by our immune system, and that's what creates these antibodies. So this uh, sort of compromised gut wall allowing things to pass through is a phenomenon that's often referred to as leaky gut syndrome. In fact, when I have a patient where we've detected more than five food sensitivities, uh, that's often enough for me to make the diagnosis of leaky gut syndrome. The good news is that it's often possible to eliminate reactive foods from the diet for a few months and then gradually reintroduce them once symptoms have subsided. So you may be able to once again eat those foods that were causing the problem in the first place. You just need uh, to allow the gut to heal itself and the immune system to reset. As a naturopathic doctor, I have the ability to run tests for both allergies and food sensitivities. 
But because sensitivities are harder to detect, I tend to run the food sensitivity IgG test more often. So I've been running this test for over 10 years, and in terms of therapeutic value, nothing has come close to it. In fact, let me tell you a little story about my first patient ever. So my first patient walks into my clinic. You know, I'm fresh out of school. I'm nervous. Uh, they come in with a chief concern of tongue swelling. So uh, we go through the history. And what was kind of interesting about uh, her history is that uh, she led a very healthy lifestyle and ate a very clean diet. In fact, she was vegetarian. So I decided to run the food sensitivity test, my first time running the test ever. It came back uh, and there was really only one elevated food and that was soy, which was just so funny because uh, she was obviously eating a lot of soy to boost up her protein because uh, of, her, of her diet. So we cut soy out of her diet for three months, and but it didn't even take that long. After only a couple of weeks, she no longer had um, the tongue swelling. Her symptoms were completely gone. So just a little bit about the whole procedure. So it's quite simple. Uh, getting this test requires two requisition forms that are given to the lab that's taking the blood, which can either be taken from a vein or a finger prick. The specimen is then sent for analysis, and in approximately 10 business days, the results come back. Now, foods that have high levels of these IgG antigen antibody complexes are referred to as elevated and appear in a red color. Those that are sort of borderline are, appear at, in a yellow color, and foods that are in a normal range uh, appear as green. The test does require a bit of interpretation. This is where the art comes in and where having a experienced clinician is very valuable. Um, because uh, what you can have is cross reactions between foods and environmental allergens. So some of the common ones I see is a cross reaction happening between plum and birch pollen. Another common one I see is a cross reaction between mussels or uh, other types of shellfish and dust mite because they both um, dust mite and mussels have this protein on their shell that's basically the same. So these cross reactions can happen. So there's also some foods that if elevated don't have much clinical significance, meaning they don't really tend to produce symptoms. Uh, one example is guar gum. And some sensitivities may even have a name that's not immediately recognizable, like gliadin, which is actually interchangeable with gluten. So I've run this test in patients aged uh, anywhere from two years old to 70 years old, and 90% of the time we get excellent clinical outcomes. The really cool thing is that more and more health plans are starting to cover this test. So you may be partially or fully covered for this test. So if you've been curious about this test, I hope this helps to clarify some of the misinformation. I really like this test and have tested myself a few times over the past decade. So really don't wait. Um, it could be the answer you're looking for. Um, if you're interested, message me for more information or visit my website at www.drshawn.ca. That's www.doctorshawn.ca. Thanks for watching, and I'll be back with uh, some more videos shortly.